in this uh, segment we'll start with the third type of nitrogenous waste which needs to be eliminated that is uric acid so such uh, elimination of uric acid is known as uricotelism and organisms which excrete uric acid are known as uricotelic now how is this uric acid formed and how does it help the formation of uric acid it is actually a complex process and it requires large amount of energy it is considered as a complex process and requires more ATP as compared to ammonia getting converted into urea so here also uric acid production is going to take place from ammonia then uric acid in liver but some uric acid is also produced in kidney so it is produced from ammonia in liver maximum production of uric acid from ammonia takes place in liver and some in kidney also so highly expensive process as ATP requirement is more it is a complex process also most of the uric acid which is being formed from ammonia that formation of that process takes place in liver but small quantity of uric acid is also produced in kidney now what is the advantage of spending so much of energy and undergoing this complex process the advantages are that uric acid is less toxic than even urea so if we are talking of toxicity level maximum toxic was ammonia as soon as it was formed in ammonotelic organisms it was removed if this could not be removed then it was to be converted into something less toxic that was done by ureotelic organisms they converted this ammonia into a less toxic substance that was urea here ammonia is converted into a least toxic substance that is uric acid so out of three this is the least toxic even less as compared to urea then how much can it be dissolved in water it is almost insoluble in water so we can say it is almost insoluble in water and the amount of water which is required to eliminate one gram of uric acid is only 10 milliliters so to eliminate one gram of uric acid water required is only 10 milliliters only 10 milliliters if you are able to recall to eliminate 1 gram of ammonia, the water requirement was 300 to 500 milliliters, almost half a liter. Then to eliminate 1 gram of urea, it was about 50 milliliters. And to eliminate 1 gram of uric acid is only 10 milliliters of water. That means, one, it is least toxic. It can be stored in the body for a very long period of time without any ill effect and it requires very very less quantity of water for its elimination now in certain organisms as we said it is produced in liver and kidney when uric acid is produced in kidney kidney can eliminate any nitrogenous waste in solution form only as we said it is almost insoluble that means it is excreted out in the form of solid crystals but kidney handles only solution so then how that solution is converted into the solid thing so what happens is especially in birds and reptiles dilute solution of uric acid dilute solution of uric acid is sent from kidney to cloaca because in kidney the uric acid which has been eliminated that has to be in a solution form so there is a dilute solution of uric acid in kidney and this 
dilute solution is sent to cloaca. In cloaca, all that water which is there gets absorbed. So in cloaca, water is absorbed. And what remains is only solid uric acid and solid crystals of uric acid, they remain. And that is why many a times when we see the droppings of birds or the excretory material of lizards, we find there is something whitish along with the regular fecal matter. The fecal matter's color could be black, brown, greenish, but there is something white which is also along with that. So the colored part is that undigested food material and that white part is that solid uric acid. Birds droppings are also known as guanos. So guano is actually a term given to the droppings of birds. We can say it is bird fecal matter or bird dropping. Now, from this bird droppings, this uric acid is separated and is used on a commercial scale. So, from here, uric acid is separated for a commercial usage. For commercial usage. So, most of the birds when they excrete their uh, waste, there are two components. There is undigested food, which is the fecal matter, and along with it, there is solid uric acid. And this uric acid is always white, which we normally see with the bird droppings or with the fecal matter of lizards like organisms. Now, let us talk about the examples. That is, we are talking of uricotelic organisms. The organisms in which uric acid is getting excreted. In this, we include insects, some crustaceans, land snails, reptiles like lizards and snakes. So here, Amongst reptiles, we would write the names of snake and lizards and birds. So these are the main important uricotelic organisms. So now what has happened is the ammonia which is produced by the process of deamination of amino acids Either it gets eliminated as ammonia in ammonotelic organisms or is converted into urea in ureotelic organisms and in uricotelic organisms it gets converted into uric acid. Uric acid formation is a complex process, highly energy dependent process. Most of this uric acid formation takes place in liver but some is also formed in kidney. But Kidney can handle any nitrogenous waste only in solution form. So in case of birds and reptiles, that dilute solution of uric acid which is formed is transferred to cloaca where all the water gets absorbed and only the solid uh, uric acid gets eliminated. Advantage of converting ammonia into uric acid? One, it is least toxic of all three nitrogenous wastes. It is almost insoluble, so it can be excreted as a solid material. And if water is required to eliminate 1 gram of uric acid, that volume is very, very less, hardly 10 milliliters, as compared to the water which is required to eliminate other types of nitrogenous waste. And these are the important examples of uricotelic organisms. And this is very important because from birds droppings, the uric acid which we use on a commercial scale is extracted. And these droppings of the fecal matter, they have undigested food plus uric acid. And cloaca is the common structure which receives 
the opening or which receives the um, secretory or excretory material from all three systems like digestive, excretory and reproductive. So from reproductive system, whatever is released, that is the gametes would come out through cloaca or cloacal aperture. Undigested food, which would come from the digestive system will also come out from the same structure and from excretory system also, that is nitrogenous waste. And that is why these organisms are able to excrete or throw away undigested food and uric acid or uh, uric acid crystals together because excretory system and digestive system are opening into cloaca and this cloaca opens out through common aperture. So these are three main important nitrogenous uh, waste materials and that is how we classify. We will talk about one more category which is called aminotelism. So aminotelic organisms and some more nitrogenous waste also. So we have seen the examples of uricotelic organisms. Now we would discuss if there is any uric acid which gets eliminated by us that is humans. So there is little uric acid which is present in the urine which is produced by human beings also or mammals also. So how is that uric acid formed? As we said, uric acid mainly which is formed in most of the uricotelic organisms is coming from the ammonia which is produced by deamination of uh, amino acids. But in case of humans, in humans, uric acid is produced by breakdown of uric acid is produced by breakdown of purine nitrogen bases. Purine nitrogen base. And we know purine nitrogen bases are two adenine and guanine. So what happens is adenine or guanine. Say we write guanine here. Both these, they can get converted in, into a substance called xanthine. And this xanthine gets converted into uric acid. Though the amount of uric acid produced is very less and it gets eliminated. The source from where the uric acid is synthesized in case of human beings are purine bases. Purine bases that is adenine and guanine. So when adenine or guanine are there, they are converted into a substance called xanthine and which gets converted into uric acid and then gets eliminated. In some people, there is some metabolic disorder and in that metabolic disorder, what happens is uric acid formation increases. It is due to a metabolic disorder and these uric acid crystals, they get accumulated or they uh, go and get deposited in the joints and there is a disorder called gout which is, uh, which is seen in such case of uh, individuals. So uric acid formation increases and crystals get deposited in joints and this condition is known as gout. It is a highly painful joint disorder and this condition is seen due to protein metabolism defect. So this is not a normal situation. In normal case, the purine bases, that is adenine and guanine, they get converted into uric acid. But if there is some kind of disorder and this uric acid formation increases, then those crystals get deposited in the joints and the condition which we know as gout. So these are the three main types of nitrogenous waste, ammonia, urea and uric acid. There is one more category. Though it is not like a very uh, major and it is shown only by certain organisms, it is known as amino 
Telism. It is known as amino telism. In this, the organisms excrete the excess of amino acids as it is. So here, excretion of amino acids takes place as it is. What we have seen is most of the amino acids which we don't need they are converted into ammonia first by deamination. If organism can excrete ammonia, then ammonotelism. Otherwise, it is getting converted into something which is less toxic, either urea or uric acid. In this case, the organisms excrete those excess of amino acid as it is without any change. And the organisms, the example are some mollusks, and some echinoderms and they would be called aminotelic aminotelic and the substance which is eliminated is amino acid without any change as it is so this is a fourth category though it is seen only in some mollusks and some, uh, some echinoderms other nitrogenous wastes other nitrogenous waste which are seen in case of animals are we have some more which we can add here like allantoin allantoin is an excretory material which is seen in some reptiles then hippuric acid creatin creatinine These are some more nitrogenous waste which are excreted out by various organisms including human beings and mammals. So when we talk of excretory material, the main focus was nitrogenous waste. And as we said, there are three main that is ammonia, urea and uric acid. But in some organisms, we find amino acids get eliminated and these are few more things which are also eliminated in organisms including human beings. So after this we will be talking about the structures which help in elimination of these nitrogenous wastes.